Hello, I welcome you to a discussion on the topic religion and the internet. If we are to study on the topic of religion and the internet, we have to first understand religious customs, methodology and latest technology and cultures in the cyber world. Scholars of earlier times have seen the study in this sphere with doubts. Contemporarily, this doubt has disappeared to a certain extent since internet is a very helpful source for studying religious issues. Let us now understand the role of internet in the study of religion. Internet has a capacity of transformation in various forms and elements, act as a tool of conversion in terms of representation and networking. Low cost of internet usage and high access of the internet has brought about immense profit for those involved in the IT market. Almost all religions and its agent have marked their space in the internet. Even those who are not that interested in using it, search engines, its ratings and its impact acts as a dependent factor for different religions, especially to the followers who rely on the internet for knowledge on their faiths. Now we shall discuss a number of issues that are to be considered while study the religion and the internet with focus on the different belief perspectives, many religions and internet elements are to be considered. Here many issues to be addressed by the academicians come up. These issues may be the methods by which the media uses to represent spiritual and religious aspect in the web. Interaction level is of great importance here as some web pages offer experiences of different religions and others have sacred texts and scripts uploaded. There has been a commercial edge to the internet and religion. In order to study religion with a modern approach, we could now add the element of internet. Individuals and religious organizations nowadays have turned into media providers of their religious faith. They even work as news and broadcasting media. While we discuss religion in the media and the web, we have to take into account the religious matter present in the classical mainstream broadcasters and the changing media distribution that are evolving the nature of worldwide broadcasting. Since there are many different channels for the same and different religions media saturation takes place. This may lead to widening 
perspectives and exchange of views which may further have an impact on an individual. The internet acts as a platform for exposure to different faiths and hence pro promoting connectivity. The internet content and the interaction help in increasing participation in the religious activities, but affiliation is not guaranteed. Now, we can also buy religious products online via internet. We can say that the web has also become a market for selling religious products online. The religious organizations can also keep a track of their followers or those who have interest in their religion and communicate with them. However, expressing religion on the internet may also bring about conformity driven by the notions of membership in small areas of religious interest even though the internet is an agent of change. Well, entertainment has no boundaries. Anything can be called entertainment as long as it entertains you. Here we can say that even religious content on the internet could also be viewed as entertainment. Religious content uploaded on the internet whether in text or videos can also be seen as entertainment. There is also a tendency for competition for providing religious content among the service providers. Some channel may show only interesting religious content or those with humor that might be enjoyed by the audiences. Some problems in relation to the content may be present as well. Those with boring designs may not be well entertained by the viewers and they may choose over technologically advanced designs. This however may result in the isolation of the traditionalists. In the internet one can see that the shifting models of religious organizations are facing a lot of challenges from the smaller players and individuals. The content of forums, blogs and social networking sites are sharp and hence the bigger. Now, we shall discuss about the digital divide. There are many questions that are brought up regarding the online religious material reaching the public. The number of the users of the internet may increase daily, but on many occasions it is realized that it is the upper class elites that mostly uses it. Hence, there is a certain kind of gap between the producers and the consumers. The divide results in influencing the type of religious material and audiences and also 
the providers of the content. A lot of research has been carried out on the sociology of cyberspace in earlier times. McLuhan's work should be mentioned here as he provided many issues. Manuel Castles and Sherry Tarkle wrote on the academic and developmental models related to cyber studies. O'Leary started the analysis of virtual rituals in 1996. The theoretical frameworks uh, for studying religions in cyberspace were contributed by Hadden and Kwan. Now we shall learn a little more about the various areas under which study has been done. There are different areas under which the studies have been done, especially in relation to disciplinary frameworks associated with the study of religion and media. Scholars of contemporary religions have also included the study of cyberspace in their works. The importance of the internet on the all aspects of the religious identity, authority and knowledge can be seen. Well, I shall mention here that not all the religious content is print material. Many of them are found online in websites, forums and blogs that are conducted by the scholars or institutions. There are also journals who contribute to the resources of knowledge in this area of study. Now, we come up with a question, what study areas could be taken up by the scholars studying religion in cyberspace? Scholars can study religion in cyberspace from various disciplinary perspectives with a specialization in a certain religious belief. In fact, the study of religions in cyberspace itself has become a subject with many universities offering courses and degrees for the same. However, scholars and students interested should have knowledge about the recent trends and innovation of information technology. What is required in order to work in the area of religion and the internet? So, what are the requirements for working under the area of religion and the internet? It is expected that in the modern era, people will have some idea about the internet and can easily adapt to it. However, what is required here is not just basic computer knowledge. Awareness of new technologies, language, the basic etiquettes, delivering the content, various formats and designs are some areas that one should have knowledge about. One should also have some kind of knowledge about the filtering and censorship technology. There is a need 
to study about the development of computer and the internet and also acquaintance with various theories associated with the computers and technology. Apart from the requirements mentioned above, there are also a few other necessities. Chances are there that contemporary scholars of religion have already understood the ability of the internet as a repository and resources for research. They are also likely to have an idea of how the system runs. Coaching is to be given in the field of monitoring and archiving sites. Training is also necessary on determining the background and reliability of the information. Various opinions of interaction, field work and capturing data is also relevant here in cyberspace. But one should also have some acquaintance with the real world practices, suitable methodologies for collecting and storing a data should be used and even backing them up for later use in times of systems failure. The cyber world keeps developing and changing and cannot always be aroused in a scientific and orderly manner. Hence, one needs to adapt to it. What does mapping the relations between religion and the internet involve? So, what does it take to link the relation between religion and the internet? Well, the mapping of relationships between religion and the internet is not just a literary tax. It includes various technical activities, software and media. Also an amalgamation of various types of search engine models and methods is required. This may include in depth search that is not found in all search engines and also using various techniques so that the maximum usage of the resource can be made. Much of information and details is stored in the internet even those that are rare. Valuable manuscripts and sacred texts have been placed in the world web by scholars and followers. This has made information easily available than before. However, with the changing and developing nature of the internet, we can only speculate how much data has been lost or not open to view. The data may be accessible only to few and only for some time because of the temporary nature of the data. It is seen that a lot is lost even though the amount of data creates difficulties in managing and observing smaller areas related to religion in the internet. A few questions have emerged having a certain internet age in relation to the study of religion. Here 
we may mention the textual effect of holy books as searchable objects from where the small keywords and concepts could be further searched. Hyperlinks are also present that own some religious value even though the symbolism can require a thorough assessment as to if the rituals and religion on the internet is considered lawful by the followers of the religion and its head. We could study the religious expression and the way in connection to the questions of objectives being enhancement of the spirit, proselytizing and even networking. Access to the website completely depends on the owner's policy as it may allow access to only its members and are closed for the general public. Using the data online and the challenges we nowadays find many sacred texts and scripts online. This gain importance by the interpretation of the scholars and those who are unsure of the validity of these online versions and also get public exposure. Scholars should be used to these issues and also those who refer to the internet for materials for their research. Well, in these online sites, there are issues of observation and also issues regarding ethics such as the identity, use of various avatars and also anonymity. The data on the web may be branched into different sections for different kinds of users. So, the different patterns of use must be figured out by various sectors of the society. Official sites of different faiths have been started by many religious organizations. The net as a primary source for research projects while we work on any project or research related to religion, study of resources and its application is very important. For people who are comfortable with using the net or have an access to it, the internet is a primary source. The internet data on a particular faith can help create the first impression of the religion and its followers. A basic idea could be gained with easy. Well, as a matter of fact, the first place we now seek to find any information on any religion is the internet. Search engines, especially those with higher rankings play an important role. The types of information found on different websites can differ with special mention those found in academic sites and popular sites. Specific research in any search engine is important. Google is one of the most important search engines, but if we go on to search God in Google, the results will be many. Hence, 
we need to be specific when we search for any information. We need to conduct a refined search as it is very important as it allows a more research oriented approach to evolve. Deep search will also enhance the quality of information found. What should be taken care of while searching any information in a search engine is the spellings and phrases. It is important that whenever we search, we type the correct spellings of the words or phrases of what we are trying to find. This will result in more accurate results. Even though we may garner a lot of information from the web, we must make sure that we combine this information with conversation with people with advices from experts especially while studying small area of study associated with the study of religion. Now, let us talk about the origin and location of his site. In terms of ideological and theological approach to a religion, the origin of a site should be known in relation to the location and affiliated organization, it is necessary to determine the origin of a site. Some of the sites have their contact, location and their origin all provided in the site. However, the information that is given may or may not be real and also that some websites do not give all this information. This can be because of the presence of some controversial content in the site and hence maintaining safety. Well, in some cases the government may have access to tools that can track down the details of the origin and location of the site. But we are talking about generic tools that are available to common public that can help any user to find the details of the website they are using. We shall now discuss on the censorship and filtering protocols. Protocols for filtering and censoring have been developed by the internet companies in collaboration with the government. These protocols have resulted in subjugation of those trespassing including those people who have certain views on religion. All content that might be argumentative or controversial is censored with the help of the filtering technology. Using complicated algorithm, some contents is filtered. Let us now discuss on the ever changing nature of the world wide web. The web develops and changes at times disappears and relocates, keeps on developing and changing content and sometimes sites even disappear or relocate. We cannot find hard copies like that of printed content. This can create complications especially if it is referred to in a book. Next comes the issue of hacking. 
hacking can lead to the change in a site's content and display and designs. One has to combine data management and archiving skill in order to interpret religion on the internet from a contemporary perspective. In 1996, Alexa established the Internet Archive, which has preserved many sites in a publicly available resource. It presents huge opportunities for scholars who study religion on the internet. Well, we must also look into the issue of the clarification of the ownership. The clarification of site ownership is required when performing a research. There are a number of tools that give a variety of technical and related data based on the internet protocol address determines this clarification. Each and every computer and a website has this code. We can also find information about the site from the hyperlinks present in the pages of various people or sites who have chosen to incorporate it for both good and bad reasons. Tools like samspet.org can be used for checking a site's affiliation. Well, I must mention here that it is not only the internet that has information and religion. Along with the internet, some religious organizations now use the media, for example, television, radio, print, recordings, etc. This media is also in an interaction with the internet. Sermons and speeches Religious programs, ceremonies are also archived for public viewing. However, the count of the number of visitors cannot indicate how or by whom the site is being used. So, it is not possible to know who or what type of people are using it either. As we move towards the end, we come up with a question, why do we place religious material on the web? The reason behind doing so is different for each individual or organization. Well, it may be done so in order to place a religious experience for the world to see, to make their understand the belief and practices, to gather new followers, to create identity formations or to even relate to offline social practices. There are many scholars who have explored the concept of formulating exploration of belief identities on different forums and platforms. Well, one of the most critical issue is online representation and the nature of representation is also very significant. For religious beliefs to spread widely and attract a larger number of people, virtual presence is required. However, 
it is not necessary and mandatory that all religious organizations have this as a motive behind their virtual presence. Not all organizations have their virtual presence to proselytize their religion. They can place the URL and names of the websites outside their religious institution to spread the word. Some also provide an opportunity for their members to interact with one another so that they can maintain and enhance their beliefs. This interaction is also online. Now, let us talk about virtual representation. This virtual representation may be in the form of a text or multimedia. The second life is an example of a virtual world where people create avatars digitally as they like. This avatar can travel and even attend meetings with other avatars in the online world. Well, there are chances that the activities go beyond just chat and also that most of these virtual worlds can have commercial edges to it with their own online shops and marts. Also that there are virtual places of worship are being established like the mocks, church and synagogue. So, how can we measure the effectiveness of the religious presentation online in comparison with other formats? Well, the experience of surfing a page to that of reading a book is completely different. While surfing one can search for keywords, hyperlinks and multimedia while surfing online. Surfing can have different motives like it may come up from advertisements, links on other pages or a search engine. The experience of the reader on surfing different pages may be different and assumption cannot be made on the readers infrastructure or accessibility. Also there are chances that when one visits religious portals online it might also include surfing of other areas of the web that is not religious at all. The internet acts as a data bank in many ways. We can find a lot of source materials in the internet through bibliography, retailers and file exchange which is cost effective. There are also some sites that allow remember interaction special elements for those subscribing to it and a program with other media may enhance religious identity online. Also the students use it as a data bank for their answers and hence their answers may be internet driven. Wikipedia 
is also another source from where one can get information. However, Wikipedia has been prone to criticism for their inaccurate data and argumentative content. So, we can see that nowadays many of the print publishers have transferred their content to the web sometimes as replacements of or along with the print edition. It can be seen that they are now giving competition to those whose content is specifically created for the cyberspace only. Project Gutenberg and Internet Secret Text Archive have both made copies of important texts available for study and use. Some specialist sites have also developed focusing on specific interests such as ancient religious belief. We can also find academic expertise on the net, in the blogs and podcasts. Now, let us sum up our discussion. We learnt that there has been a shift in the study of religion and the internet. There is a relative growth in the awareness of information, culture and computer mediated communication. I think it is necessary to let the young readers know that there are some limitations of the computer and its services that are the poor internet connection, slow machine, file size problems and the development of the ARPANET. While studying the religion on the internet, one needs to observe the site. The tasks of site observation requires new updated skills. The task of studying religion on the internet is very much labor intensive. It requires regular connect collection of site data. Data can be susceptible especially if the machine is affected by virus or if attacked by hackers who can easily access the data. The libraries of academic institutions are not able to store high amount of data and archiving. A question certainly surrounds us that can we preserve data on the internet for future use? Well, most of the data is lost when database crashes. Emails can be deleted, personal data is hidden or deleted. The net's temporary nature along with mundane content and the sheer volume of materials bring up certain issues for this studying the relation between religion and the internet. Well, those interested in studying the religion on the internet must adapt and react to ever changing nature of the internet. Now, as we arrive to the end of this discussion on the religion and the internet, let me conclude by understanding some limitations and profiles. Well, while doing field work, the users may not be ready to give details of their surfing ways. 
it also has implications here. The users may have safety issues. They may fear that their safety is at stake and they are being tracked by security agencies. This may hamper the research. If we are to make an attempt to try and get a representative sample of surfing habits in certain religious cultural groups, it can be problematic. Also that people may claim of religious activities online, but can also be surfing, gaming and interacting on social networking sites at the same time. With this, I end my discussion. Thank you for being a part of this lecture.